Three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the McCracken Post in the show. I know it's been a long time coming, everyone, but we are back and quite possibly better than ever because I am joined by longtime friend Kent Glass. Kent Glass, this is your second time on the podcast, but first time in front of the viewers because our first podcast episode, we had to re record. And here we are, which is tragic, tragic, many, many, <laughs> many months later, re-recording this, uh, but you're here for season two. I'm happy to be here, Matt. Thanks for having me again. Yes. It's unfortunate. That first episode was kind of a banger. So, uh-huh. When, when we're miss on, out. Miss out. well, we could just, we, well, you know, we both have the script of the first episode written down, so we could just read of off course, word, word for word, word, word. never yeah. know, but, uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we're on season 20 you'll be able to say hey now it's on season two and you know yeah. maybe i should have been on season one <laughs> <laughs> i'll say 18 seasons ago why'd you only have me on once in 20 <laughs> seasons <laughs> oh my dude i got this mic now i'm like the mic is fancy right right i like, maybe a little overkill but i, I this kind of that. thing brings me joy and this is, um, it's Mary Kondo of- What does that mean? Mary, Mary Kondo. Kondo. She's the one who wrote um, uh, The Art of Tidiness, like cleaning up. What's mm. it called? Is that really? And she also had that Netflix series. Netflix series? Yeah, Tidying Up. She wrote that book. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Life Changing I... Magic of Tidying Up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she had a I Netflix had series, and she was talking about, like, this sparks joy, and, like, you should only keep the things in your life that bring you, mm. like, real joy. And there's actually yeah. been, like, I was reading afterwards about it, or someone told me about this that was related to this a Netflix series about uh, you are more likely in life to get more happy from purchases if you replace things that are bringing you down interesting and replace them with good things instead of just adding more stuff onto your life so kind of getting rid of the bad yeah like, yeah just that replacing that's interesting but just like this i can get behind that this like even having like a boom arm it just makes me feel <laughs> like i matter you know what i mean yeah i feel like <laughs> and they're not too expensive either and it really does increase the audio quality they're, uh, boom arms I, are not expensive i have thought metal. about getting a new mic especially like at the beginning of pandemic yeah i thought about it and on my but, desk, a boom arm saves space. So mm, there you go. Resourceful, resourceful, efficient, space efficient. efficient. Yeah. <laughs> I exactly. feel like we both, like when we get into something, I feel like we both like want to have the things that make you good at that. You know? Yes. Yes, I think so. I like you get so. into the podcast thing. Like I remember, like when we first started playing Street Fighter, I played it like once at your house, and then I bought like the arcade stick. <laughs> I bought an arcade like, stick, yeah, when I first got Street Fighter, because yeah. I just thought it was, I just wanted to feel, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted yeah. to feel like a Street Fighter player. For sure. And yeah. that's the point of hobbies, to sink all your hard-earned cash into. Yeah, exactly. If you're saving money, what are you doing? Oh, Not if your hobby is like advantage. stocks or something. Well, well. In which maybe. case, get a better hobby, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you are, are are you a stock guy? Do you have any? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Although my uncle, just to give you a little perspective, my uncle just bought a Tesla. Uh, oh my! Yeah, uh, he's in stocks big, uh, mm. and uh, when I was like thirteen, he like sat me down. He's like, "Here's some stocks," uh, but I didn't know much about it. And I don't remember much, but you met him. He's the one that lives next door to me in my dad's house in Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. Um, the really funny guy. He's uh -huh. really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, but he bought a Tesla. Yeah. Did, what, did, what is he, what's like his job? I don't want to expose everything about your uncle. So here. basically he like goes to hospitals around the world and really around the world. Uh huh. And uh, like... Ooh, I haven't 
talk to him about this in like maybe 10 years, but like he like advises them or rates them or like checks on them. Like I forget the title, but <laughs> he's part of this like company, something like that. Where he, Interesting. Like he just travels to different hospitals and isn't a, like a medical professional, but uh, is part of like this like larger infrastructure of this company Interesting. or i think maybe he's even like i don't know i don't know i need to talk to him <laughs> i need to get him on the podcast that'd be great that'd you be should. really good you should <laughs> i got my cousin that's... on the podcast his video really? up yet i need to find it so that's, that's the big problem i need to find a lot of the lost <laughs> recordings <laughs> you need to go into the uh into the archives and... yeah yeah there's Hold a thomas on. video out there somewhere there's a Thomas, a Thomas season two. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure the Thomas is good. But wow. Yeah. Good stuff. I, about getting back in the Street Fighter? I would like to. For this I, last like, hurrah of season six? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got the championship edition or whatever. I paid like my $6 while it was on sale oh. to get everybody. It's Not high. Bad. That's it's a good a deal. One. Yeah. Yeah, plus Evo dude, would be so sick I've been to telling to. everyone. Be I'm so going to keep pushing this. <laughs> we all go to Evo. Vegas, 20, we'll all be 21. Road trip. Early August to early uh, road trip to Vegas in August 5th through 7th mm. that weekend. Mm. I want to compete personally. You should. It's a. It's, it's open, open bracket. bracket. That's Hop fighting in. games are. Hop in. They're proud of their open bracket. I want to sauce get in. your first opponent, and then just get destroyed by. You know what I want you someone? guys to do? Because if you've ever seen a fighting game tournament, pools, yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. TVs, like just in lines with just yeah. chairs. Uh, like usually crowds form up because even in pools, top players will play each other just because Evo is that big. Yeah. But uh. I want you guys behind me, basically. If I'm in pool, oh, you guys, like, we'll be cheering you on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you have heads. so much pressure. Yeah, <laughs> in their heads. The other person will also have so much pressure. Yeah, you'll walk in Balrog, and we'll just be like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that it's a chance." I need to practice. I need to practice, dude. We would like, hype you up. That'd be so good. I need to That'd get out so of my. I'm in a plateau in Street Fighter where, like, I think I've realized I have to really take the game seriously to get better. Because, like, once you're, like, top 7% in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a flex that you'll be able to carry with you, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, top 7%, so. Yeah, and not in the world, in, in A. But, uh, in, well. In, <laughs> in the free world. <laughs> and the free which world. extends to the EU. And, yeah. Um, but, uh. That'd be so much fun, and yeah. it'd be fun. I'd I'd love to like before that, like we get a little bit into some of the games that like like Steepy watches Killer Instinct, and so do I. So like we can yeah. maybe watch some of that together beforehand, so you guys know a little bit, and like get some baseline knowledge of all the other games that are going on. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be cool. If you've ever seen Dragon Ball Fighter Z, I've never watched I've Dragon seen... Ball, but that game is so much fun to watch. It's wild, yeah. Because it like looks like the show. Yeah, it's right. flashy and yeah, it's crazy. Big. Yeah, old frame, old frame, old frame. Oh, old frame. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so what we? <laughs> we'll cut that out. I'm sure my editor. You're will fixing cut it that past, out. yeah. Uh, uh, but there's like there's gonna be like a lot of games. There's even gonna be Smash Bros. there. Mm. I the stinky Smash Bros. players are coming out. Oh my god. <laughs> smelly <laughs> unwashed. <laughs> unclean. They are stinky, dude. They're unclean. <laughs> <laughs> Unclean's way worse than stinky. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come in, they're gonna have, you know, their shoes are gonna be untied. Yeah. I mean, do you have a Smash Club at UTC? I mean, I'm sure there is. Well, have I'm you ever seen them? Because at UCF, they come out in numbers with 
carrying TVs into our, like, it's called the breezeway. It's basically this mm. big open walk space with, like, uh, the bookstore and different, like, restaurants yeah. on the side. And they just That's come cool. in the middle there. They're all gathered around these couches with, I don't even, I've never seen them enter or leave. I've just <laughs> seen them with these big flat screens. They just, just kind of appear. Yeah, just playing. They Nintendo apparate Switch. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, like, I'm not on campus, so I'm not. Yeah. I don't see that. I know there's, like, the esports dorm. I know that at Ball State, the Smash Club was pretty big. Mm-hmm. Like, in the student center, there was just, like, a room that they were always in, like, any time yeah. that I would be in there, so. It's, it's crazy it's, how popular that game is. It's interesting that that game is, like, so, I guess, like, it's got a little something for everyone. It's like, yeah, it's like the video game, video game, right? <laughs> the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, like, yeah, I don't know, because obviously, like, I'm probably dookie at it, because I just, like, I've never played it. But mm-hmm. it seems like a lot simpler than, like, Street Fighter or, like, any other of the popular fighting games it seems very unique yeah i think its popularity is because it's easy to pick up but also it's like it's like othello (laughs) what does othello say easy to pick up like like impossible to master or something like that yeah by the way i don't like othello (laughs) i've never played Othello. i we like to have a board we like have the game upstairs but yeah i don't yeah it's a boring game. <laughs> it's like the same as it was in like the sixth century BC. I bet it's the I'm, same yeah. exact game. <laughs> I, it's crazy to me how like chess hasn't been like how I don't know how evolved chess is. You know, it's crazy to me that chess got big on like Twitch. Yeah, give me. A I'm gonna. Uh, because like I don't find chess entertaining <laughs> to watch. For yeah. one, I guess it's. I mean, do you? Maybe it's maybe it's that uh, all your favorite personalities are playing. That's what I big think. Brain it game. Is, yeah, I know that. Like the big appeal, there were like a couple of the, like the big tournaments, and it was just, like all big name streamers were yeah playing chess, which I'm sure was cool. I did not. I think the watch, uh, the narrative, maybe not narrative, the the general belief that chess is like a big brain game for smart people, I think that's so yeah. stupid. Having someone you think who it's is, stupid. I think it's stupid. Having some as someone who has been and won regional chess tournaments, <laughs> I mean, who else can say that they've actually been to chess tournaments in their region yeah. and won and gone like four zero? Like I've competed. Oh my! <laughs> I've competed in chess. Uh, we made it to state, but we all had spring break plans, so we didn't go, of course, because we're, oh, we're not losers. Oh, <laughs> So did, 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 like, did Regent just, like, not show up to the tournament? Or did yeah, the we, we, we didn't show down? up at all. Uh, oh, that's I'm a college so team rough. Show up to state. Because it was on spring break. We're like, no, okay. Spring break! <laughs> okay, you, you, you nerds. <laughs> <laughs> you guys enjoy your board games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, do you think that chess has been like solved? You no. know, like I feel like I don't know. No. There are so many like <laughs> just like the openings and such. I don't know. Like I feel like chess is so far evolved. You know, it's like oh, like a computer can tell you with like 100 percent accuracy that was a dumb move. Like this was the perfect move. You know. Um. Computers, okay. Here's the thing: this is actually pretty Not 100% fascinating, accuracy, but... and I don't, I haven't done that much research on it, but I've done a little bit. Computers being really good at chess is interesting because, like, computers can beat humans most of the time. I actually don't know about the latest technology if it's like always beats humans or not. Like, if it beats like Magnus Carlsen, who's the best? Yeah. Uh, Hikaru, I know uh, the names. Yeah. Uh, did you know? Uh, <laughs> I'm in, a, oh, like, when seventh grade, like, I was really into, like, professional chess. So, like, mm-hmm. like, the, so I knew Hikaru, like, uh, 
like my first D&D character, by the way. If I haven't already added <laughs> myself as a nerd, it's a super nerd, this podcast this is about to do it. Uh, my first D&D character, Kiro, his last name was Nakamura. Oh, I didn't make that connection. There you go. You could also say it's based at, if I wanted to add myself as an ultra nerd, you could also say it's based <laughs> off of the Nakamura lock, which is oh a, my. the long time. For a very long time was the best way to fold a paper airplane for long distance. <laughs> <laughs> I know that for some reason. How do you know that? Was that straight from? I had a, for like six Middle weeks school. when I was in like fifth grade, I had a paper airplane phase, right? A paper airplane mm-hmm. book. I showed all the best ways to do them. Let's go. And the Nakamura lock was like, <laughs> it, was a, it was amazing. Nakamura lock is good. You know but... when somebody bust out the Nakamura lock, but you just don't I might still chance. know how to do it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Uh, no, you I... show up to a competition, you're, you're just like, damn it. This <laughs> yeah. one guy pulls up. Uh, like, I don't want to see a chance. Yeah, I could definitely recognize it. I guess I could pick it out of a crowd. But uh, <laughs> what I was going to say was, what was it? It was going to say, like, uh, oh, yeah, the chess bots. Yeah. They're just really good at, like, I think the way to beat them is because they just predict, like, thousands and millions of combinations of moves, like, mm-hmm. of turns, like, six turns ahead. They just, yeah, but they don't think, like, long-term strategy. They don't go in with strategy. They just, like, think about, like, based on these pieces, what is the best move, like, and that, that and it gets harder to win with that, I think, later in the game, but I might be talking out of my ass. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Checkers has been solved. The best checkers player in the world never loses. So, really? Yeah. I didn't, know that. I didn't know that checkers had a competitive scene. Uh, it's pretty much dead when uh because <laughs> it's been solved, it's yeah. Been solved, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just know from turn one, you're just like, oh, I don't see a chance. Does the person who goes first always win in chess? No, I don't think that's it. I think it's that, uh, I don't know, actually. It might be true, but it doesn't seem right. But uh, connect four, the person who goes first always wins. Yeah. I think it's been solved. You want to go in the middle, four? by the way. Every time? Yeah. I didn't know that. Have you played Why, perfectly? What's... Have you ever lost a Connect Four with your middle start? No. <laughs> <Drag>. <laughs> I always I always rock, paper, scissors for first. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well call it there. Yo, 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 can you I just... go first? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you care if I go first? You drop it in Good the middle. Dish. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> Just under their breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think that... I don't know. I enjoy board games. Yeah? I think that the... What's your favorite board game? My favorite board game? I really... Okay, with a game with a board. Probably Dead of Winter. Which I've played not in a long time. Why do you specify... Because is Dead I of think that, like, Winter not commonly thought of as a board game? No, no, no. Dead of Winter definitely is a board game. Like, just objectively, it's a board game. Mm-hmm. But, like, my favorite, like, game to play, on like, it's a card game. It's, like, my favorite kind of board game-esque, kind of, like, tabletop game. You know? It's Dominion, and that's my favorite. Dominion. Domin- yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you played Dominion? No. I feel like that's crazy that the Dominion path has never crossed you, but... Or that you've never crossed Dominion's path. <laughs> I pray I don't. It's a scary sounding name. No, no, no. It's a bunch of fun. It's like, basically, you got your little, there are like 10 cards, it's like, and they're all kind of like action cards and such, and they like draw cards or let you play more cards. And then you got your little money. And then you like, you go and you say, oh, okay, I have three coins in my hand. You draw five cards. I have three coins. I'll buy a three cost card. That could be either an action card or like more money and then your goal is to build a deck around the cards in front of you so that you can buy like the victory points but you don't want to buy victory points too early because they're dead cards they can't do anything during the game they just give you points at the end of the game so it's a 
fun little pacing game. You got to kind of space it out. There are a lot of like other conditions that will end the game early, like if three piles are gone. And there are so many expansions for it where like they just add a heck of a lot of action cards. It's a ton of fun. It is my favorite game. I'm pretty basic with board games. I haven't played many. I haven't tried many. I like Catan. Because normally, everyone, normally everyone's played Catan. Mm-hmm. It's, the one, it's the one, like, I think it's the only board, most of my board game experience is, like, literally children's board games. So, like, Catan <laughs> is, like, that one tier above, but it's not in the crazy ones. Like, the, you can yeah. get pretty crazy. But uh, Catan is, like, if anyone's ever thought about, like, board games in their, like, adult life, they think, like, what's, like, the most basic for adults is probably, like, like in that tier yeah. is like Catan, like where it's like cooler than Monopoly, but it's not <laughs> like uh, as complex to set up and as like Ticket to Ride, which is probably just a little bit above that. Yeah, I would say they're about on the same like yeah. tier. Yeah, you know? uh huh. I think that another reason, like both or, of those are like it's not Euro like the, games. It's or... not like the the Lord of the Rings board game, which is like crazy. Like my <laughs> my friend and I, we went to a uh, what are those stores called? Like a game store? Like a hobby I guess? store? Yeah, like a hobby store yeah. in Orlando once because uh-huh. uh, uh, we were thinking about starting a D&D campaign between mm-hmm. a bunch of us. And uh, that didn't happen. But, uh, Bummer. Bummer. Uh, but uh, we went there and like he explained to me a lot of these games. And there's just some, like, <laughs> there are games where like the box was like, this big yeah. and like <laughs> this like freaking like deep into the shelf uh-huh and it would just said like halo <laughs> and I'm like what? What? what that's a halo board game it's like massive <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i i like going to hobby shops like i think it was fun i don't know i think they're a lot of fun you know but yeah the games like katan and like Ticket to Ride, like Euro or like German style games. I really enjoy because it's like you're not directly interacting with the other people. Like all the competition is taking place like on a board. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you can like trade cards in Catan, but mm-hmm. you're never like doing anything to hinder the other players. And so a lot of the time, like if you win, it's because, you know, you play best. You're not screwing over Catan. other people. Because I yeah. love uh, any game like that. I love Civilization VI. Mm-hmm. I love any yeah. game where I gather my resources you know for sure and i have sure. my sheep and my coal and just all that stuff <laughs> yeah, i like yeah resources. I, I could go more Very complex than Catan. i've just never played a more complex uh i have but uh yeah Catan. i could play something more complex i know i played uh we played at our friend's house battlestar galactica yeah <laughs> Uh, well, we okay, we started Battlestar Galactica, yeah, just yeah. to be clear. Yeah. We got like an hour in and we were still like half explaining it. Yeah. And that was the only, <laughs> we just called the only it. time I played a more complex board game than Catan. And that was a very complex one, to be fair. Oh, that goes into that game. Yeah, I. The perfect I like board com- game for me would have a lot of like. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Zothara? Oh. Did I cut out? Are you good? Mac? Yeah? I can hear you. I think that we just disconnected. I did not hear anything for the past, like, 30 seconds. Okay. What did you hear? You did a little... Uh, you said the perfect board game for me. Yeah, okay. Froze. The perfect board game for me. Have you ever seen Zothara? I've not seen Zothra, no. Okay, so in that movie, uh, I'll probably could post a picture because it would be really quick. Uh, Go for it. I mean, the board game comes alive and tries to kill them, but that's not the point. That's not what I Oh, want. wait, is that that, like, Disney movie? Is that... It has, um... Uh, what's his name? I feel like I may know what you're talking about uh it's the one in space where their house goes to space yeah 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 yeah. yeah. uh but the point i'm trying to make is it has like dax shepherd in it yeah <laughs> what i'm trying to make is that 
in the board game, there's like there's a little spaceship like moves on the board game. It's got this nice little like uh-huh. metal creak as it like kind of shifts back into tide as it moves along the board. And, like yeah. the board has like levers and like a key that you have to like actually twist and turn. Like I want like phys- I like physical props and like stuff I can yeah. interact with on a board game. That would be a perfect board game for me. I think that would be so cool. There's I'm, a game... I bet it's out there. I just have not seen it yet. Yeah, there's a um, fun game. It's called, like, I just, oops, um, what's it called? It's, like, Mysterium, I think. Yeah, but basically, like, there's one person that will, that, like, has a deck of cards, and mm-hmm. they just, like, have pictures on them, and then... There are like different locations or something. I may be explaining this poorly, but there are like different like tiles. So one person will give someone clues, but the clues are just based on random pictures that they're mm-hmm. given. And then they have to like try to guess like a location for like I'm pretty sure it's like a murder mystery. It's kind of like clue or something. Is the location like Portugal or something? Or would it be like a it's shark, like, like in a, a shark house. tank? It's, oh, like, in okay. a house, so it's, like, the kitchen, like, the basement, the bedroom. See, I, stuff like that. I really like the idea of Clue, and I like, like, mystery games where you guys have to mm-hmm. solve something and, like, use your brain to, like, figure stuff out. But I just don't yeah. like the gameplay of Clue. So, like, anything that's, like, adjacent to that, I mean, I yeah. still would play Clue, but it's just, like, I, I want something a little more complex. Mm. I think that's fair. Definitely. Were you in the Clue? Uh, have you ever seen the Clue movie? I did see the Clue movie. I saw the Clue <laughs> movie because when they did Clue at Macaulay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what did you think of it? <laughs> the Clue movie. I liked it. I liked the Clue movie. Yeah? Yeah. It has like different endings. It has like a bunch of alternate yeah. endings. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's a cool concept. Good for mm-hmm. them. Let me uh, pause the recording. Uh, no, I'll just cut. Uh, fuck. No, I'll just pause. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Editing this is going to be a nightmare. I had up my light just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Smash cut. We're back. Right. <laughs> no, we're back. We're back. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, you need to introduce me to more board games. Is what I'm saying. I would love to play more board games. That like shame is is that we have but we have only but the virtual board before us. <laughs> virtual realm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, more and more people are in Chattanooga now. So, I mean, listen. When we get people back. Well, we get, we're gonna have a lot we'll more hit board the board. Time. Yeah, we'll hit the board. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to play Dominion. I'll it's play Dominion. Uh, you got to build your little deck. It's fun. also a lot of skill it, expression. Oh, that's good. That's important. Anytime yeah. that you want to, you know, Civ Six is like a top ten game of all time for me, and that's like the perfect digital board game. Civ Six is really fun. Civ Six is like difficult. I think that since I played like I played Stellaris. Mm-hmm. before and those are similar like you know 4x i think that i would like to play civ again Ex- I think it'd be fun. what is it like explore exploit expand exterminate i think like actually exterminate. Yeah. <laughs> exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh thomas when he plays that game thomas is this thomas an exterminator yeah <laughs> Thomas is a Terminator in any game he plays, dude. Mm. He will end he's you. A, he will. He's a he's a killer. He no is a doubt. killer. Ice in his veins. He plays to win. Yeah. He does. He <laughs> <Ice> does. <his laughs> yeah. yeah. I like. Yeah. I would love to play some more board games. It's a good time. I recently got Stellaris. I haven't played it though. Stellaris is fun. It's good. I like that you can make your own will little race that you play as i played as uh-huh. birds you know i played as a bird yeah it was high 
avian. I say you know, like you had to have any way of knowing that it's like bird aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have players, uh, spacefaring birds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know me. I always get her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, but we, uh, man, like, I like it when everyone's got something kind of that when we're all around, like when, even when we're all around, like playing, it doesn't even have to be like a super great game, but when we're all playing something together. Like when we played, uh, what was that one where you have to guess the word, like mastermind? Guess the word mastermind? Maybe. No, it's the one where there's a bunch of words. You have to like guess the right one. Like they're all laid out Charade. on the table. Oh. You have to guess a word they're all laid out on the table? I do not they're like, know. They, we played it. We played it together so many times. It's the card, like they're these cards that have just one word on them, and they were all laid out in this grid on a table. Code mast, code master. Oh, code names, code names. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I do know what you're talking about. Grenades. I, <laughs> I completely spaced on what we were doing. It's a movie. <laughs> Shreds is a good time. Shreds is, is fun. Shreds is fun. We played charades a long time ago, but we did play it once. Yeah, that's a good time. Uh huh. I've been uh, told that we should play charades again. Hunter. Yeah, yeah. He's Hunter like, says dude, that. we should just organize charades again. It's like, yeah, it's a good time. I call out Hunter on this podcast right now. I'm not going Go to. Go for it. Don't, don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Let's no, just no, no, say, no, I, no yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Respond to my text, Hunter, if you're watching. That's oh! Loud. Jesus Christ. Get pooped on. Got him. Poop. Fuck you, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like board games, though. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Weren't you in a club? Yeah. Anyway. I was on, at Ball State, I was on, in the board game club. It, I went, like, twice. And it was just a really awkward, like, one girl showed up, and then this guy was, like, every time that he would explain games, he would oh. just, like, talk directly at her and be like, so, yeah. And then you, like, whenever she would make a move, you, I can't it was, like, a... Was he a, mansplaining? Kind of. And then, like, she would do something, and he'd be like, no, 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 that do this instead. Oh. Like this will get you. Like this will. I hate when people do that, just in general. But even when, like, yeah. when he's clearly like interested in her, that's even worse. Yeah. But just it was a bad look. That's awful. It was really. I yeah. felt <laughs> very bad. <laughs> he like, guides her hand to the right piece, and like <laughs> that's awful. Yeah. What up? Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> but... Was she the only girl there? Out of how many people? What was the ratio? There were probably. I think it was like. In the basement of the library, there were like probably five or six tables playing different games. Nice. So I once went to the Dungeons and Dragons Club mm. uh, once, and it was in this crowded little room, and there were like eight tables. Mm -hmm. You could there's the kind of thing where you could like barely squeeze between people's like backs, like sitting down. Yeah. Like everyone was playing something. It was pretty cool. And then I met like that a group cool. and we started playing together. And I was a player. And I played mm -hmm. for like three weeks, once a week, mm -hmm. freshman year, until they said like, All right, we're gonna get a regular time. We're thinking Friday night, six PM to midnight. And I was <laughs> like Oh, oh what? <laughs> That's the opposite of prime time. What like... did you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> that's for people who live and breathe six hours D &D. that's a yeah. lot the, the people were cool i've talked to them before mm -hmm. uh since uh, one of them was cool the rest were all right uh <laughs> they weren't all that we didn't get along too great uh mm. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. It's not important. It's not anyway, important. anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Ghost, ghost. Yeah, man. <laughs> ghost, ghost. I. My one. 
a spooky ghost story is so bad, but I really want to have a spooky ghost story. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I understand. I like it. So basically, you ready? Walk with me here. I'm so ready. Okay. Get so, immersed. So you know? freaking ready. All right. So my room in my house, my room's like right here. There's like a door. And then like on this wall is the bathroom. It's like bathrooms over here, right? So I wake up. I have my light on because I always just leave my light on because I don't care about electricity, you know? So I leave my light on. Go into the bathroom, close the door. I'm taking my shower. I'm the only one at home because everybody else is at work or at school or whatever. So I'm taking my shower. And then the door like fully like unlatches. I go like, you know, like you can hear the doorknob like turn and the door like pops open and it swings and it like goes like all the way open and it, like hits the wall like on the other side so it's like a fully open door i was wow. like oh what the heck i like, poke my head out i was like okay that was weird and then the door closed oh it, like creaked shit. a little bit and it got like halfway closed oh, and i was like shit. huh and then i like closed closed like locked like latched closed again oh my god like, uh so i was terrified that is terrifying yeah so i was like yeah so i was kind of like freaking out so i like finished taking my shower because what else are you gonna do Mm -hmm. and then i like got out and i was like i just kind of stood in there for a little bit because i was scared you know Mm -hmm. and then like adrenaline pumping i just like throw open the door and then like all the lights are off in my house including my bedroom light and i said don't like that and you're naked probably right well, I mean, I had a towel around me, so yeah, but functionally you're still vul- naked. You're still vulnerable. Yeah, <laughs> functionally naked, yeah. <laughs> well, like the day I was born. Uh-huh. And so I, like, I open my door and I, like, turn on the light and I, like, jump into my room. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I would overwhelm them with force. I would scare them, you know? Yeah. And there was nothing there. And then that was kind of it. That is, that is weird. But it, the, yeah, it was funky. Because the door, like, popped open, you know? And it went all the way open. So I was like, it's no way that it's just, like, a draft. But yeah. I don't know. It was spooky. I, th- I, I think I have a supernatural experience. I mm. think I do. Um, I've had one where the door, I was alone in the house, and the door cl- slammed shut on me, but then it was next to a AC unit, and the wind, like, there's some, like, weird vacuum where it cl- yeah. slam the door shut but mm. that was freaky but uh there was one time where me and my friend were sleeping i was sleeping over at a friend's house yeah in his basement he had one of sure. those nice basements too but mm-hmm. uh bougie basement got it he had like uh it was like this statue it was pretty rustic. So he had like the statue of this like wooden bear. Mm. It was like probably three feet tall. Dang, okay. Probably went, went up to here and like it was pretty wide too. It's like a fully mm-hmm. carved thing that you'd see in like some Colorado mountain like lodge or something. That's cool. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Wide base too. The thing was nearly as thick as it was tall. Dang. And uh so suffice to say, there's no way this thing should be moved or budged or, uh, heaven forbid, fall over at night, right? There's no sure. way. Yeah, no way. Uh, so we're all sleeping, and uh, we were all, like, like, on his couch or whatever. I think we were, like, 11, 12. Uh-huh. And uh, while, while we're sleeping, I would just like look over at that bear and be like, oh, that's a cool bear. <laughs> a sick bear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember I closed my eyes. And probably because when you're asleep, you don't feel time pass. But I mm. basically remember looking at it, closing my eyes, hearing the loudest thud and crash of my life and then just instantly looking back up 
and it's just like fallen over on its side. Dang. And I remember being like, like talking to my friend, hey, blah, blah, blah. There, nothing could have pushed that over, right? He's like, no, like my dogs are asleep. My parents are upstairs. I have no idea what that was. And we're all like, ooh. Dang. And I was like, what happened? I still have no idea if it was like some freak, like gaseous buildup or like some breeze coming through the house. Maybe it was on like a loose bit of like carpet or something. I have no idea. But, uh, dang. I can't explain it. Inexplicable. Inexplicable. I, yeah, I, I like to entertain the idea. That goes for real, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I really want to have a spooky ghost story. I once had a dream that arguably is scarier than. <laughs> you ready for me to talk about dreams? I remember, I vividly remember you saying once, I could not give less of a shit when people say, talk about a dream that they had because they could just be making something up and it, i was just like oh, that's absolutely true but you're ready for this i'm about to tell you a dream despite the way you remembering you saying that i don't even remember saying that but that is uh, something that i would that. say that is absolutely like, i could I not say. care less <laughs> it's about like basically i had this dream where i was like sleeping and then downstairs i like heard a woman laughing and then like children laughing and then just like really fast footsteps upstairs. And then I remember just like this creepy woman just like walking in my room. And I remember being pumped at the time. Instead of being scared, I was pumped. I was like, hell yeah, this is a ghost story. And then I woke up and I was like, damn, that's not even a real ghost story. I just had a dream that I had a ghost story. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. <laughs> So you would let your soul be sucked out by like a banshee dementor creature and then you got a cool ghost story. As long as I got better and it turned into a good ghost story, yeah, yeah. why not? Do you like read <laughs> ghost stories? I used to a lot. I used to like creepy I used to pastas a lot. and stuff. I used to read uh Yeah. Yeah, I used to read into that too. Uh but I love that kind of thing. I um, like Yeah, I also like that kind of thing a lot. Do you, Being scared is fun. Yeah, I don't believe in ghosts, but I think they're... But that's just me. I don't believe in ghosts, but I find the stories really fun. I used to watch yeah. uh, a show. It was kind of like an X-Files Ghostbuster ripoff. It was called, like... Maybe it was the X-Files. <laughs> no, Dr. X-Files Fates. wasn't about a creepy stuff. That was, like... Okay. X Files was, wasn't it? Wasn't X Files one with like aliens? Isn't it? I don't know if it's still on or not. I shows you shows you how much I know about X Files. Yeah, it's about unexplained and mind bending cases. If I could find the intro to the X Files, because I I watch the show a lot, the show I'm thinking of, but I haven't thought about it in so long. While you're looking at that, I my no, that, like, sister and I. I'm not gonna be able to find it, but uh, it was basically some show where they like went through like three creepy like tales from their friend, like three creepy like encounters, and yeah. they tried to see if they were real or not. Mm -hmm. That's it was, interesting. It was like uh, was it Factor Fate? Because I that's the show. Maybe it was Factor Fate. Because, uh... Paranormal Files. Yeah, it was. It was Factor Fake. Dude. Yes, Factor Fake was hype. Uh, I have no idea if I watch it now. If I, I think there's like a 50% chance I absolutely hate this show if I watch it now. But there's also 30% <laughs> chance I would just love to death. But I used to watch Factor Fake when I was like 14 or whatever. When, uh... I, I guess when I was about the same age. Like during the summers. Abby West and I, my siblings and I, would watch Factor Fake, and then like our couple of our family friends and like his brother would come over, and we would watch Factor Fake, and we loved that show. But there was always one episode. It was like this like spindly alien like walking across a lawn and like 
really kind of disturbing way. And every single time that we started that episode, Mosby, our dog, would go crazy. He hated it. He would like start barking at the TV and stuff. And mm-hmm. he would like freak out. And we were it always scared us too much to watch the episode. So we never watched that one. Wow. You think Mosby has had an alien, has had more spooky encounters than you have? You think maybe he's had a spooky alien encounter? I mean, can't like animals supposedly see ghosts? Isn't that a thing? Pretty sure I, maybe cats can, I think. I saw that on, uh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> if anything, they could smell them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ectoplasm and wow, all that, all that nastiness. Ghost just. Yeah. Have you ever seen Beetlejuice? <laughs> I've not seen It's Beetle a fun Juice. ghost movie. Really? Yeah, it's Tim Burton. It's all yeah, weird. It's all true. weird and wacky and fun. Mm. It's a good movie though. It's it's pretty good. It's it's like like a cult classic, I would say. Yeah. Like, people love Beetlejuice. Mm. No, I've but not seen uh it. Oh, what was I gonna say about Factor faked. Uh, yeah, that was a time. There's a time where I just watched that over the summer. Like I watched that and like Man vs. Food. Dude, Man vs. Food is. <laughs> Did you ever watch I... that? Yeah. <laughs> I love. I still love Man vs. Food. Like I, I don't watch it, but I still like know that I would love it if I watched yeah. it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like. I think that any food TV is pretty fun. I do you like watch any like cooking competition shows? Yeah, what's I like watch Cutthroat Kitchen. Yeah, Alton Brown. Uh huh. I like Alton uh, Brown. He was on Hot Ones. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> stream of consciousness there a little bit, but uh, Master Chef, Gordon mm. Ramsay, it's uh-huh. fascinating. Uh, it's about it. I think those are a lot of fun. It's a good. I don't know. I think those are good. The man. Ver- I love all three of them. Man versus food. I always like that it was chill. It was just him. Like I liked the first half when he would go around to these all the best restaurants in that uh-huh. city. He went to Niagara Falls, and then when me and my family went to Niagara Falls, we went to the same restaurant as him. Oh, and that's we high. really enjoyed it. And we saw his. We saw him on the. They had a challenge, like a lasagna challenge. It was like an Italian restaurant. Oh, let's go. Uh huh. It was crazy, and. Uh, uh, it was like gluttonous. It was like a sinful amount of lasagna, <laughs> and uh, his picture is on the wall for having completed it. It was cool. That is cool. Would I tried it do... actually. I tried it and I failed. Oh, let's go! <laughs> I, I tried would... it. And I was just like, no, pretty good lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. Did yeah. they make a big deal out of it? Were they? Like... No, they didn't actually. Because like, I think they knew that it was all just, just like a. I don't remember. I don't think they did. I don't remember it too well, but uh, a lot of his challenges were like borderline disgusting. Oh yeah, no doubt. He once had like... like plates and like a tower of oysters. <laughs> 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 I think, yeah, I would like to do. I've seen like, wasn't there one? Or I'm sure there were multiple where he like did it with someone. I know there was like a pizza one Mm -hmm. where he and another guy were just going ham on some pizza. Yeah. I think that would be fun to go and do do a food challenge. We should should do the Blazing Wings challenge again. Ah, yeah, that would be fun. I would like to do that. Remember when Hunter did that? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. That was a... uh, Were you there for that? Musical or something. No, I wasn't there for that. Oh, well, if you ever seen SpongeBob, Hunter ate the wing... Like how when Squidward eats the Krabby Patty when he's eating the Ford. And gets like the Tony's thing. That's That was Hunter when he was eating that first wing. And we're, we're all like, Hunter, what are you doing? Just go for it. Just go for it. I know, and then like Jack ate a full wing and like so did I and Durham did too. And Hunter was like nibbling. But it was, yeah, he's not good spicy food. So what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, it's also, you know, it's a personal thing. It's, yeah, it's hot. hot. It is hot. Yeah. We did the, uh, like, the hot ones. We did. The hottest sauce we on the did. planet. The Apollo, it was painful. Yeah, that was, uh, that was brutal. I'm going to come out and say it. It was brutal, was but I'm also going to say, I thought it'd be even more painful. I would do it again. I would do it again, too. I'll That's what it. I'm saying. I would do it again. Christmas party? When I'll I told it. Jack about it, and he said, 
Well, he, he he didn't directly ask to do it, but he was really interested, and he thought it was really cool. He did it, so I bet I if still we asked have him, it in my fridge. Yeah, I think I still have some of mine too. Christmas party, we'll make that happen. We should we should definitely make our Christmas party. We should cook some nice food. That'd be fun. Oh yeah, that'd be yeah. really fun. What if we did it like during New Year's? We probably I mean this isn't necessarily podcast territory, but New Year's. Spend it with the boys, depending on if who had the plans. I'm sure the people have plans on beers. Well, but we should talk we with them as it comes closer. If it should be, yeah, yeah. we got time. We got, yeah, time. we got time. Mm. I don't know how long this has been going. We started at like 12:40. Okay, there you go. Ish. Um, was there anything else we wanted to talk about? Is there anything else on our docket? Um, uh, hmm, let me think really hard. I saw a movie yesterday. I briefly mentioned this, but it was about it's into the wild. It's mm-hmm. about this guy who you see it in theater? basically just hitchhiked across America to Alaska. But it was like it's a true story. But it's about like kind of his process of it's about mm-hmm. you know it's about the people that you meet along the way. I haven't even watched, though it's uh, like, dude. I haven't watched a movie or a show in like a month or two, and I'm trying to. I, I'm I'm lost and. I'm in the uh, I'm in the cave, basically. You're in the cave. <laughs> I'm in the cave. I don't know what to I don't know what to watch. I'm looking around. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a show or like a? I to watch alone. By the way, to watch alone. If you want, because I'm watching something with my friend. I'm, me and my friend are watching my my best friend, like Daniel, my old roommate. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're watching. Uh, Wow, I can't remember Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> oh yeah, you know that it's like the anime on like Netflix that's about. My like... roommate at Ball State loved that show. Oh, it, dude, it is so good. It is. Really? This is my first anime I've ever watched. He's watched like he like wasn't an anime guy, but then like one like year later he got into it. Like he watches like uh-huh. uh uh he calls it Hunter Hunter, but it's clearly Hunter X Hunter. Yeah, X there, buddy. <laughs> Uh, so he watches that. He's seen. Uh, well, literate, yeah. Uh, <laughs> who puts you on the planet? <laughs> uh, he's watching One Piece. He's seen like uh, Avatar, and he gets pissed whenever I call it an anime. Uh, what does he say? He's just, uh, it's, it's like a cartoon. It's Korean, and I think it's what he says. Oh. He, he doesn't actually get pissed. He gets like you should mad. call it his cartoons. It's yeah, like I did. Anime. He loves Avatar, and I decided to watch it with him. But he's watched. Uh... I think that's it. I think it's One Piece and Hunter Hunter. Those are the but, big uh... ones. Uh... Maybe like My Hero Academia. I know that's big. I don't know. My Hero sure. Academia is popular. I ever tell you about that girl I met? My ADHD is kicking in. Did I ever tell you about that girl I met? That uh. She was talking to me about anime, and like, it must have been a bad day for Matt because I was, t- I was entertaining <laughs> her. I was like, yeah, yeah, like I was. I don't know why she wasn't even, she wasn't that interesting or that cute, but uh, I was entertaining her. We were just talking, man. Sure, sure. I was just in a good mood, just, maybe. Or I was just talking, being personable, just yeah. being personable. We were on a yeah. trip together. We we signed up for a beach trip, and we were on a bus together. So hey, no problem with that. That's better than to do, yeah. but uh. She's basically telling me how she watched My Hero Academia, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I've uh, never seen that, but I've got friends back home who do, and, you know, a new season's coming out. And she was telling me, like, I don't know how or when, and pretty, but pretty quickly, she said, like, uh, yeah, I don't actually watch it. I just read the plot synopsis online. Huh? And she was telling you to watch it? And I'm like... She doesn't... Interesting. Um... Uh, that's like, like why criminal why uh she's like yeah. yeah i just don't really have time you know i'm like right okay she just wants to be part of something <laughs> i see what's going on here <laughs> and Dang. then she went on to like there's another show that was like that maybe like legend of Korra, and she's like yeah I, I just also read the plot synopsis on like imdb i'm like huh. yeah 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go uh, talk to anyone else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so uh, Jabroni. It's kind of a jabroni. J- j- no doubt. <laughs> Jeez. Hmm. Dude, people say they don't have the time. Okay, if you actually don't have the time, but like people, I think a big problem in college is people don't realize that they have like, they're in control of 100% of their time. Like you decide to spend your time on. Like, you can get into this, but it's like, if you're, like you are doing what you want to do most at that moment. Like, if you're out like, if you say you don't have the time to study or you don't have the time to go out or, and get like drinks, like either way, like you are doing what you want to do. Like, don't say like, oh, I wish I could do this. Just mm-hmm. do that instead. But like yeah. just time management, man, is so important. But yeah, I feel like basically, huh? No, keep going. I was going to get, I was going to circle back to what show should I watch? Oh, <laughs> I was just going to say that like between working until five, every day and then like having classes i spend a lot of my time either doing homework or like at work Mm -hmm. or school but i still feel like i have the time to you know like i'll watch a movie or so or something or like i'll play some video games i feel like i can find the time those are also like easily consumable things Mm -hmm. you know i don't have to plan around like going out with people so yeah, my I don't know. My criticism is not towards like people. It's like, it's more like how it's more like me criticizing how people spend their free time. Really, like yeah. if you, like if you've got your free time and you could like either like watch a movie or like read a book or like go out with friends or like play a video game or like work out, and you're like, yeah. oh man, I don't have time to work out. I wish I could work out. It's like, but I'd rather like read a book or watch a movie. It's like you, mm-hmm. you are doing what you want to do most. Yeah. Just recognize that you want to, you don't actually <laughs> yeah. want to work out that badly. You would rather read a book. This is free time you're spending. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get that. I, I understand that. Uh-huh. But, yeah. uh, yeah, I've been reading this book called make, make time. Interesting. Yeah. And I forgot the author's name, but, uh, are you reading anything right now? Are you much of a reader? I don't read a ton. I read the first chapter of The Black Arts. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, that's really the most I've read. In a long uh-huh. time. I read, what's it called? One second. It's Cormac McCarthy. The last actual like full book that I read Blood was Blood Meridian, which is an amazing I haven't read that one. Blood Meridian or the Evening Redness in the West. Mm-hmm. Just tell me this a badass title. That's a, that's a really good title. <laughs> that's a really, really good title. It's so good. See, yeah, you're watching think... movies. I'm reading I'm so you got that. I We need to switch. I wish I could, I wish I watched more movies. You wish you read more. That's true. Or maybe you don't even wish you read more. You didn't even express that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that there are definitely, like, there are books that I would like to read, but I really just, I don't know. I think that movies, like, the visual aspect of storytelling in movies, I find really interesting. Yeah. And, like, how much, like, a film work can contribute to a story's narrative. I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and how evocative movies can be i, I read the books can be about it. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to the dune movie i mean I'm, you yeah i think that dune would be is definitely on the reading list i'm not like when the trailer first came out i was like dying to see the movie but now it's like i don't know i just don't i just don't get super hyped for movies and theaters anymore really yeah no wow. which is a tragedy Movie did theaters you, are. Uh, you saw the. Uh, you sent this. Did you see the Spider Man trailer you sent to us? Yeah, I did. It, it was really cool. It looks sick. It, was really <laughs> it cool. looks very cool. I, I love didn't Spider-Man, expect. Dude. I didn't expect uh, Doctor Strange to be in it. Yeah, I did not either. I didn't really know. I don't follow a lot of updates on 
Marvel. I think that you and I are, neither of us are really big Marvel fanboys, I would say. I actually, I've actually realized this about myself, is that I, like, quote Marvel movies, like, all the time. For, <laughs> I'm a big movie quoter, if you know this about me. Like, if you ever pay attention yeah. to what I say, I quote movies all the time. And then I'm usually like, anyone? Anyone get the, where's anyone, the quote anyone? from? <laughs> I usually do this motion to my computer screen. It's the person I'm talking to. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't, I didn't see, uh, I don't know, the new Marvel movies, besides that one, don't really excite me, but that, that one excites me. But, like, I, yeah. I didn't want to see Black Widow. I didn't want to see, I feel like there couldn't have been a, I'm not one of those Black Widow haters. Mm-hmm. But I just think, like, Oh man, there could not have been a worse time for this movie to come out than like right after she died. Yeah, <laughs> <Spoiler> honestly. <alert. laughs> it's like way to like kind of remove a lot of stakes, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, I don't really, I don't know. Re- the retroactive pod development. Or... I have no stakes in this fight, that, so. Uh, Danny Villeneuve is, if that's how you pronounce his name, um, that's how me and my friend do it, but uh, <laughs> Is directing the Dune movie that gives me that yeah. is like one of the only reasons I've ever interested because the other Dune movies have been really bad. I've heard. Yeah. Have you I've seen Arrival yet? I know the last time we. I've like, not seen Arrival. A few Arrival weeks ago, yet. we told you to watch Arrival. I have not seen Arrival yet. I really want to. Yeah. It looks just so good. It's, it looks. It's, it's freaking powerful. amazing. It's yeah. <laughs> so. That movie is so good. It's, oh, I really. I, everyone I've, who's I've ever talked to has watched it has just absolutely loved it. Yeah, I agree. It seems like a super widely loved movie. Yeah. Critics and fans alike. It's not like mm. Venom. <laughs> not like Venom. <laughs> I haven't seen Venom either. No, I haven't seen Venom either. I just know that critics hate it. And yeah. like, people love it. Do I people think... love that movie? I believe it. But... I, yeah. I'm going to take your word for it. I'm gonna yeah, take just take my word for it. Dude. Yeah, I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> Blindly, Mac. Blindly. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, so, uh... I think this has been a good podcast, Kent. I think so too. Uh, I think so too. Next time on uh, you see Mac and Kent again. Uh, what's our <laughs> closer? Is it uh? No, can't think of one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the McCracken Post and Show. If you stuck in. This far, we've got exciting things coming up for season two and even season three. I promise the wait will not be as long for season three. Uh, got some ideas like group podcasts that perhaps can mm. be on, we'll and uh, some more formal interviews. But until next time, I've been McCracken Poston. Can't go ahead. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Anytime. <laughs>